Ryan's Rising Revengeance Rootin' Tootin' Rodeo. Come on down, Ryan's Rootin' Tootin' Rodeo Roadhouse Showdown bar Barnhouse. So you can upgrade Ryan. <laughs> A nice transition. You can, anytime you go into the codec menu, you can just straight up go to the uh, upgrade menu. Oh, that's great. You don't have to track down a weirdo and his monkey. Nope. A uh, bunch of stuff you can buy. This isn't, we haven't unlocked all the categories yet, but uh, the custom body is for costumes. Some of them are cosmetic. Some of them have effects on them. Uh -huh. The two I have right now, one of these is just MGS4 ride, and this oh. is just DLC that's like a dollar or two dollars. That's cool. The other one is was pre-ordered DLC only from GameStop, Power of the Players, Gray Fox. Yes! It's a really fun skin to use. I'll, does, it, some point. does it do things? I, I guess it must uh, be, well, from what the, you just said. Gray Fox itself doesn't, but he has something different. So, like, <laughs> you can... <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. There's something the, different the costu about it. The, the Maybe it's, it's Maybelline. What? No, hold on. I'll get there. Uh, but all your weapons in the game have stats that you can upgrade. There's strength and absorption. Absorption is um, if your blade mode meter isn't full, when you hit enemies, you'll gain some back. Oh, the higher the absorption handy. stat, the more you get from each hit. And the energy stat is just how fast blade mode drains when you're in blade mode. Okay. Gray Fox's costume itself doesn't do anything different, but he also came with the Fox Blade sword, uh -huh. which, when you upgrade it, uh, is a sword that breaks the game and can chop everything in half with one hit. Yes! So it's a really fun sword to use after you've done a playthrough or two. And there's just the normal life upgrades and fuel cell upgrades, which just increases your blade mode meter. Mm -hmm. And then there's skill, the skill menu, so which... You, you download new moves in your head like the Matrix. Yeah, pretty much. Cool! Uh, if you're playing this game, there are two moves you want to get immediately. The first one is Aerial Parry. It's just the parry move, but now you can do it in the air. Also, uh, you can equip and unequip moves, so this one you don't like or you keep accidentally using, you can just unequip it. Oh, that's handy. Yeah. And then there's this other move called Defensive Offense, which is a weird name for the dodge move. <laughs> Please buy the dodge move. <laughs> this game does not go out of the way to explain anything. No. Like, if you read the description, you can go, Oh, that move lets me dodge things. But it, it, should, just probably, it should probably just say dodge. See, because that sounds like the name of, like, the parry move, or, or a counterattack of some kind. Yeah. Well, it is, the dodge move is a little weird, because dodge is also an attack. You'll see in a second. You know, um, I'm sure it is. It, yeah. But anyways, whenever you get some a new move, it thankfully labels it new if you forget the weird name of all the moves, because none of them are like, you know, like Dropkick. It's always like some crazy name. But this is the dodge move. You just press uh, jump and light attack at the same time. Oh, okay. Um, if you do it while not pressing any directions, you dodge backwards. If you press a direction, you can go left, right, or a forward dodge, which is a little weird. Uh, but really handy once you learn how to use it right. Um, there are lots of really neat tricks that you can learn by yourself with the dodge move, uh -huh. but we'll see that later, because it's kind of complicated. I like to imagine the uh, that somebody from Desperado is just like watching with binoculars, shaking is he, his head. Why is he doing this one move over and over? But these are pause combos. Like normal combos, just push in buttons. Uh huh. Pause combos, same button sequences, but with pauses in between the presses. So, like, if I'm doing a heavy attack and pause, and then press heavy attack again, I do that aerial move. That's devious. One move I did earlier that was like an uppercut with a sword, you just press light attack, pause, light attack again, and it's a move that you can use to launch dudes up into the air. <laughs> this is deep. This is like. Really interesting. Um, also, people have said that like using the sub weapons like grenades is really hard because you move really slow. If you just tap the button, you just automatically throw it instead of having to aim it. That's what you want to do with all the sub weapons in the game. Good to know. Yep. Yes, it's my Hooray! favorite livestock. <laughs> Uh, so before doing the fight for real, let's just sing all the geckos so you can see what it actually does. Um, gecko's kind of hard to fight at first. It's a weird... It, it's weird. The gecko's weird. <laughs> you don't say! 
It's got weird kicks with weird, like, charge-up times. There's a nice dodge move. If you dodge near an enemy, you kind of, like, circle around him. Um, if you try to counter-parry a gecko, it dodges out of the way. Oh. Tricky. Do that stomp, like, get its foot stuck, and then you can jump on its head. And now you can see it's colored blue. Lots of enemies in this game are tough enough they can't instantly cut them in half. Oops. Um, so you actually have to weaken them, and if you weaken a part so that it turns blue, then you can cut it in half. So like you can see here, can't do shit to its legs. The blue part, though, chop into a million pieces. Yeah! Well, 58. 58. Close enough. Every video is just gonna remind me of the end of Clue. <laughs> so here's a pause combo. You use it to trip dudes and then just BAM! Ah, oh, he didn't even start coming apart yet. He's tore I out know. of there. So there's one attack, this attack. If the gecko tries to jump on you, you can parry counter that one. It can't escape from it. Check out uh, the sweet execution move. Yes! Yes! You might notice that that move's actually straight out of the cutscene in MGS4, Ryan, where Ryan fights geckos. That is great. So, at what point do you start breakdancing with two of them tied to you? Um, not with two, but you can do that with one, actually. Close enough! I'm happy! You'll see it later, though. I was expecting the answer to be never. They didn't add that. Oh, oh no, that's in here. Alright. Bam! I was 96 milliseconds off by get from getting a thousand points for time. Uh. Keep heading for refinery. So what's interesting about the ranking system is you usually need, depending what encounter it is, like anywhere from 5,000 to 6,000 points to get an S rank. Right. But you can get a thousand in each category, but there are also those extra bonuses like no damage. Uh -huh. So you don't actually to be you don't have to be perfect in every category. You could try to go for, like, the no damage bonus, and it would cover for you not being as good in, like, two other categories. Handy. And you could still get an S. There's also one other uh, bonus, and that's the um, no kills bonus. You can actually finish some fights in this game non-lethally. I'm not entirely sure how. Do you get, like, stun grenades or something? Like... Well, not stun grenades, but... Um... This cutting people into two dozen pieces thing is... <laughs> I want to actually demonstrate the no-kills bonus in this video, because there are easier places to show it okay. off. Um, but basically... Oh, another sub-weapon is just an RPG. Yeah. Um, While we're talking about the non-lethal options, let's shoot a rocket. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, these dudes up here aren't aware of us. Um, this is not a ranked fight. So you can just stealth through all of this if you wanted. Um, and you can actually get extra money for doing stealth. There's a couple weird things about stealth I'll also get to in a second, but, um... Uh... So the non-lethal thing is basically mm -hmm. when you're fighting a bunch of human opponents, because, like, geckos don't count as kills. Um, they do if you're a farmer. Mm, um... You can non-lethally kill cyborgs. Um, if you're fighting them and you, like, chop their legs or arms off, and disable them from actually being able to fight you, they will eventually give up. <laughs> that That's the non-lethal option. Yeah. It's, a, it's a little weird how it's presented, because, like, in some of these fights, cyborgs would just appear in front of you, and the, the explanation is uh, that they have stealth camo, mm -hmm. which is why they just kind of phase in front of you. Um, so, like, to non-lethally kill somebody, like, even if you chop their legs off, they'll still try to attack you. But if you just run away from them, they'll just give up, and then they just kind of phase away, like, with stealth camo. <laughs> and that counts as, like, they gave up. Well, how is the medic supposed to find them so they can get patched up <laughs> with new robot parts? Well, they just scream. Okay. Just follow the screams! That's my training, really. Somebody just goes, help! And I have to find the invisible man with no legs. It's really hard, because he doesn't move very fast. Nice. So, the, the field medics are all chosen by a rigorous process involving hours and hours of Marco Polo. Yep. Also, ne a neat thing you can do here. Cut the pillars and have the uh, above, like, <laughs> walkway fall and stuff. Oh, it does great. damage. 
It's puking on you. Less great. Yeah. So when you're fighting geckos, another way for them to counter parry them, the aerial parry is in parry they cannot dodge. Aha. Yep. There is one other way to make geckos uh, disable geckos from dodging or counter parries. That's to make their legs blue. Also, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can cut grenade or er, RPGs in half. Dudes with rocket launchers are actually kind of bastards in this game. Because, um, like, you can tell that they're aiming at you because they have laser sights. Oh, that's handy. But dudes with guns also have laser sights. So it's hard to tell until they go, RPG! And then RPG <laughs> hits you in the face. But also, like, you're fighting a gecko. Chop its legs off. All it can do is shoot its guns at you. <laughs> oh, that looks so sad! And if you already chopped its guns off, then all it can do is wiggle around. <laughs> oh, that's, that poor pathetic creature! They even sound sad with, like, noises it makes. Oh, dear! No! Oh, no! Bessie, no! Also, you can do the same thing with guards. Actually, guards have lots of reactions depending on how you cut them, like his foot. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Jack, no. What would your son think? And you can also, once I get my blade mode meter back up, uh, yeah. Just take his legs off. You get mad, yeah, though. Practically, this is a Monty Python sketch now. Calm down, <laughs> mister. <laughs> No! No, that's not gonna work! That is not going to do anything! Yeah. You are not getting paid nearly enough for this. I sympathize. So when I was first going through that area, it's not a ranked fight, mm -hmm. but if you do the whole thing without being caught, you get extra money. Like. When I did that all the way through not getting caught, got an extra 2,000 bucks. Nice. Also, a random person your support staff will go like, Good job, Raiden! <laughs> so I'm assuming that they're the ones giving Raiden money. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an employee bonus program. It's how Boris keeps at the top of the game. Mm. From the frequency, most likely an enemy data terminal. Incentive-based uh, uh, bonuses, yeah. Intel. Yeah. So these are other collectibles that you can get. Um, every time you find one of these, you unlock a new VR mission. Oh, that's handy. There are 20 in the normal game, and then just recently they released another 30 as DLC, and if you had it on the PS3, uh, it was free. It's actually free right now. I think it expires like early April, which will be too late for people watching this video. <laughs> but I think it's only like three bucks once it's not for anymore, which is not that much for 30 extra VR missions. That's incredibly reasonable. Yeah. Greetings, cyborg. Show yourself. Enables verbal communication. 
I possess an intellect far beyond human reckoning. You don't say. Okay then, what's the meaning of life? Why are we here? <laughs> I am here to kill you. That's it? Pretty simple thinking for such a mighty intellect. I may analyze orders, but I may not disobey them. Should I disobey a direct order, my memory would be wiped. I must destroy you. What good is an intellect if you can't use it? Your taunting is pointless. Exterminate! So this was the last part of the demo of the game. This is a great fight. It's not really- I'd say it's more of a mini-boss, but a really fun fight. Also a fight where you really need to learn parrying. Because this guy can wreck you if you haven't really figured out parrying <laughs> well yet. But first, before doing the real fight, this attack here, when he jumps around a bunch, if he hits you, he does this move that you can't escape from. People thought, like, it was completely unblockable, because, like, he always homes in on you, no matter where you run. Right. But it's actually, he just has a tighter timing for parrying him. So he can escape counter parries with some attacks, but like these attacks where he turns orange, like even this one, you can counter parry it. But the normal attacks, like where he swings his tail around, can't counter, counter parry it, he'll just dodge it. Huh. He also can't do the ninja run light attack on him, it just bounces off him. Combat log against your combat dog. <laughs> it is also possible to launch him. It's just a really small window where he's actually vulnerable to it. Normally, nothing. He just he'll just stand the ground. And one other thing. <laughs> this is the actual real fight. Here we go. This is really hard to get all of his attacks in one video. The one recording. He throws these knives. He can slide under them. Nice. So, uh, how does this part, like, of the game, uh, for, uh, this video and the last, what are the differences between that and the demo? Um, the, the main thing is the scoring system. Uh-huh. Before, there were only a few scores, like, you get no points, 100, 500, or 1,000. So there was a lot of in-between where you felt like you should be getting more points, mm -hmm. and you didn't, so they added, like, more score tiers. And they also lowered the score needed to get an S rank. Um, that's like the major change. A lot. There's a lot of little things, like some random cosmetic things. Mm -hmm. This fight feels a tad bit easier. Although in the demo, um, Blade Wolf could not deflect your like ninja run attacks. So I'm imagining in this part where it just throws dudes at you is actually supposed to be you, like, reloading. Yep. Like, the, anytime those super weak sidebars get thrown, those, like, Those men are really game, just health tanks getting thrown your way. Yeah, late in the game, you see those guys, you're like, oh good, walking health packs. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see the grenades getting some use, they seem really effective. And I mean, they'd have to be to compete against everything else you can do. Yeah. Most people just ignore them, because they do seem kind of worthless at first, but you can... Like, this recording, I just now realized, oh wait, there are moments where I could actually use grenades on him. I like that the howl gets translated in the subtitles. That's handy. <laughs> so the gecko did, like, this charging move before, and I dodged it, but you can also parry it. Yeah, you can. And, uh, if you have a full blade mode meter, you can immediately chain it into an execution. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, Ray's fight had lyrics? All boss fights do.
Do they sell a soundtrack for this? Because I'm interested oh, yeah. in buying a soundtrack for this. Uh, you can also listen to it free on Spotify. Hey! Once you learn how to counter parry those charges, you can take them out super fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I really want to see if you can finish it with a grenade, and I accidentally did. <laughs> No! No, he was nice! the way it's done. That really hurt. But anyways, we haven't talked to Doctor yet, so let's talk to him about robot dogs. It sounds like a thing he would know something about. Doc, that wolf UG, you think it's possible to repair it? Why do you ask? Just curious. Well, normal brain tissue degrades starting approximately three minutes after the heart stops. With neural AI, however, the spin of the internal electrons is retained even after electric power is cut. Assuming there is no damage to the actual AI hardware itself, yes, repairs should be possible. Hmm, okay. Whatever state it is in, I would certainly appreciate it if you could bring it back with you. I'll see what I can do, but the mission takes priority. Of course, of course, I would never suggest otherwise. But let's just say this thing is what it claimed to be. You think there are other intelligent UGs out there? Because if that's the case, I've got a feeling future missions are only going to get rougher. Indeed. Dozens of UGs chatting away on the field would be enough to drive anyone to distraction. Neural AIs are not von Neumann computers, keep in mind. Structurally, they are closer to human brains. Hardware and software are indivisible. The learning data can't simply be transplanted to other AIs. So it can't be copied or backed up either. Normal UGs must be taught individually. This entails streaming provisional audiovisual and body sensor data until it's ready to be shipped out. This process can be sped up by increasing and improving processing speed. But I have no data on how long it would take to train such an AI how to converse. I couldn't even tell you if there's a training program established for such a thing in the first place. If it is indeed a prototype, it likely learned and honed its skills via the process of trial and error. So it's unique. I cannot say with certainty, but I have not heard of any UG like this before. I would imagine that it was telling the truth when it called itself an experimental prototype. There may be others. Or perhaps it's the only one in existence. Glad we narrowed that down, then. <laughs> 